Hi, Jeremy here, and in this video, I am going to demonstrate the use of my scrape brush category in Painter 2020. And as a demo sample, I've got a photograph I took a little while ago uh, when I was in Amsterdam. It was on a rainy morning in the middle of Vondel Park, and this is a wonderful cafe called to Blau Tea House or the Blue Tea House. So let's just dive in and I just want to show you some of the ways that you can get scrapey, sort of juicy, thick paint brush strokes using these brushes in my brush pack. We're going to start off in the painting from photo palette drawer. Click on the embed source image and choose the source image itself. So we see it appear here in the clone source list. I'm going to show source image, tap on that little, I'm gonna press the tab key. I'm gonna press the tab key and drag the source image over to the left hand side, like so. Make it a bit smaller, put it over here. And have this painting image sitting over here on the right. Bring back the panels, just adjust that so I can see the source image. And I'm going to start off with the Origami Scrape Brush. And let's just give it a spin. We're going to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to hold down on the Mac the Option and Command key. And on the PC that would be Alt and Control. And what I'm going to do is tap on the Clone Color icon there in the bottom right of the colors panel and what this is doing is actually drawing color from the source as you can see down here you'll see a crosshair so we'll just quickly basically block out the canvas surface and this is ba just creating my underpainting that's all this is doing uh, it's obliterating detail of course but really it's just creating a nice underpainting which reflects the basic blocks of color with the erasers, you'll see that some of the brush variants in this brush pack have the word eraser at the end. So I'm going to leave those for later, for layers that uh, I can then eat into. So I'm, go I'm going to come back to those, but we're just going to go through the other brushes quite quickly. So this is Higgledy. Let's use the clone color just to uh, get some positioning. So I'm going to look at where the crosshair is, and I'm going to quickly map out the shapes. The tree in the background, blue table. Uh, we're going to go to horizontal scrapes here. So I'm just going to map out the positioning of the bridge. And we'll go to the scramble. So the scramble is a great one to dab with. So if you see the trees here with the uh, sun catching those bright green leaves, I'm just doing dabs here. So this is really nice. It's got a cool texture built in that gives you this um, variety of mark. It also has color variability. So if we tap on the color variability, you see it's got hue, saturation, and value variability built in. So you can really get some nice effects here. Great for foliage. Um, and then we'll go in the background here and do some vertical strokes where we have the weeping willow, so to speak. And we can do a mixture of clone color here. And non-clone color. Get a bit of variety. The clone color is always going to tend to be duller. And then the non-clone color, you can sort of get in uh, a lot more variety and intensity of mark than uh, you have in the data in the photograph. So it's very useful that way. Okay. Um, that is a scramble, and then the scratchy. Uh -huh. Let's have a look at the scratchy. I'm going to just do a little bit of foliage mark in the background. And this scratchy, here we go. It gives a really nice diffuse look to the brush mark. Actually going to be quite good for the pebbly area here. And then we go Stencil Madness. Now this is an interesting one, Stencil Madness. We can get a little bit more, a little bit more structure here. So um, what I'm going to do is just for a moment use Clone Color so I can get the outline of that table. And then what I want to do is just show you some important things about this brush. 
So first of all, I'm going to recommend a paper texture to use with it, and that is the paper called Madness. It's in the uh, watercolor papers, and it looks like that, and it's called Madness. So I recommend that. And we're just going to go to the advanced brush controls here. And we're going to have a look at the stencil. And you'll notice the stencil is using the flow map. So let's go and have a look at the flow map and see uh, what that is doing. So I'm going to go to Window, Media Panels, Flow Maps. And what you'll notice is uh, right now I've got a flow map called Featherland. There it is, and it's in the flow map textures called Featherland. And so this combination of Madness paper and Featherland flow map for this particular brush gives this wonderful textural effect with the overlay of these two textures. Really, really interesting effect. Now, the other aspect of this is the color. So this is an example of a brush which uses both the main and additional color, these two colors here that you see me tapping on the switch arrow and changing. So depending on what you want to do, if you want to have a light green and a dark green, you're going to want to use a light green on one side and then a darker green on the other. So you see these two. And then what will happen is you get this wonderful effect that is pressure dependent with these two greens. Look at that overlaid. It's just amazing. So this has a huge amount of possibilities. Let's turn to the pebble area here and do a sort of beigey orange and something more creamy and we'll do that. And then make it make it smaller and do that. So this is a really really cool brush but you do have to take a moment to set up the papers and flow maps to get the effect that I think looks really cool. That is the Stencil Madness. Thick Scrapey. Ah, Thick Scrapey. This one is a really cool brush as well. It's got an impasto effect, and so you get this really nice thick look to it. Um, I love the effect of this, and I'm going to make it a bit bigger here. Get this really rough, thick paint. So, um, you know, sometimes you're looking for these rough effects. Let's zoom out so we can see what we're doing here a bit better. Uh, we look for these rough effects. And with a sort of scumbly scrape. And this is a brilliant brush for that. So I think, I think you're going to love this. It's going to become one of your favorite brushes. Um, this thick scrapey actually is so cool that I'm going to make sure that I put this in my quick picks, my favorites. So I'll just copy that, copy that variant and put it in my quick picks, which I've put at the top here. That's just a category I made for the top favorites. And I'll put the stencil madness there as well, because that is also really, really cool. So I try to copy my favorites to different places where I can have easy access to them. Um, in case you're wondering about my setup uh, on the screw on the desktop here, um, I'm using uh, a custom workspace I created with some custom shortcut um, palettes at the bottom. Um, this is all part of Paintbox TV. So for anyone watching this and interested, uh, just uh, go to paintboxtv.com and you can uh, get hold of this workspace. Um, and just to show you that at the very top of the category list there's a quick picks and so what I do with that is I just put in brushes that I really like and you'll see thick scrapey and stencil madness appearing there let's go back to the scrape brush pack and let's go to um, thick scrappy so not to be confused with thick scrapey I know uh, my naming system is like oh my gosh Jeremy could you have could you have named them a little bit more diff easy to differentiate? Well, yes, probably, but I, I get carried away sometimes. So here we go. I'm just going to use this and demonstrate it a bit. I want to get um, those lights in there. So let's just do a little dabbing around that. I want to get the sense of structure here. There we go. This is another one that's really cool brush for getting uh, little bits of detail 
Uh, we can use it for the uh, stripes. Get a nice painterly effect. So all sorts of things we can do with this brush. This is the thick scrappy. Then we have thick scratchy. Oh my word, we've got so many different ones. And we'll just reset this to the default and see what it looks like. Here it is, yeah. So in case you're wondering about this, um, if you ever want to reset a brush, you just go to the reset button. You'll see it in the top left there. And that resets it to the factory default settings. It, well, these are made by me, so I'm the factory. So in this case, my original settings. And because I'm always playing with the settings, I, I even have to use that. Um, and with this particular brush, I've got the default set to be on clone color. So actually, you'll see that it gives a sort of scratchy look and um, really, really cool effect, I think. It's like, I really like it. So again, lots and lots of cool textural stuff going on. And then we've got thick bristly. And here we go, thick bristly. And also we're gonna reset that one. Aha, look at that, whoa. And we, this is really cool um, on the um, Weeping Willow. So let's actually use some different uh, greens here. So we've got some sun catching here. And then we're gonna go to a bit of a deeper teal green over here. Um, and I'm just looking at the photo and uh, sort of improvising. Um, and then some deeper, darker greens down here. There's our shadow, and there we go. So, very nice, thick bristly. And then vertical scrapes, as the name suggests. Um, another one that could be useful for um, a weeping willow, because we've got those verticals. And we can use it horizontally, but it sort of, I designed it so it'd be a bit more of a vertical brush. And that was what I had in mind, um, sort of doing vertical structure with it like that. And then let's finish off with the erasers. So um, let's purposely uh, we'll create a really thick layer. So what I'm gonna do is go back to thick scrapey. And I'm going to, let's look where where we'll have a nice thick layer here that would be appropriate. So I see uh, in this area, it's a bit bland right now. So what I'm gonna do is use a thick scrapey. I'm gonna scrape in these the, the greens with maybe a bit deeper green down here, deeper green down there, maybe a brighter green there and some blue here, just gonna make up a table, there we go. Okay. We'll get really deep and dark in this chair. And maybe a little bit brighter here. And highlight there, okay. So what I've got is I purposely created a layer with this thick paint in. Now that layer is a thick paint layer. You can see it here in the uh, layers panel that it says thick paint. So we're gonna make that a default layer and we're gonna eat into it with the erasers just to show you what they look like. So we simply go to the pop-up menu in the layers panel and we go to convert to default layer. There it is. And you'll notice it now the symbol is that of a default, not of the thick paint. Um, and we are just going to go through the erasers here. So there's a comb eraser. And if I do a little combing motion, you'll see that that has a combing structure to it. There is a hair eraser. And this is all in the line of scraping away paint. So uh, scraping paint is actually a wonderful technique in traditional media. Um, where you lay paint down, you scrape it away. It's really, really cool. There's a rake eraser, and let's just apply that here. So I'm raking into that paint, and we'll see it gradually disappear. 
And finally we get to the Scumble Eraser. Ooh, and that's more dramatic here. More dramatic. And this will be good for the uh, greenery. I overdid that a bit. Oh, look at that. Sorry about all the background noise. I'm recording this from my studio in the Mission District of San Francisco. And uh, my windows are open and there's always a lot of activity here. It's a very busy part of San Francisco. And so whether it's ambulances or police cars or whatever it is uh, screeching away on the road near me, um, you're going to hear that in the background. But this is the little sort of intro to this group of brushes. And I'm just going to open up um, the version of this painting that I spent several hours on so you can see um, the detail in the structure. And as you can see, I really developed some of the details, um, but everything you see here, I've used every one of those uh, scrape brushes. And you'll probably recognize a few of them. I've put um, a person walking their dog over the bridge, which reminded me of Monet's bridge. I've got a bicycle. This is very typical Dutch, having a park bicycle there. Um, and I wanted to share with you, by bringing back all my palettes here, my panels, I just want to share with you that I just went on creating layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. I mean, just to give you a sense of uh, process, um, that is how I actually work in these things. I'm layering on layering on layering and using different brushes and varying the color. Um, but anyway, that's just to give you a little bit of a sense of the really exciting possibilities that you can do yourself using this scrape brush pack. So have tons of fun scraping away with it and I can't wait to see what you create. Cheerio!